Welcome to Publishing Smarter's video tutorial series on working with DITA using the 2017 release of Adobe FrameMaker. This tutorial shows you how to work with prolog and metadata elements within a concept. The prolog contains optional information about the topic, such as the name of the author, copyright ownership, important dates, and other information. This is often used by people working with DITA content to give them insight about a specific topic. Let's start by building on the concept we created in the last tutorial. We'll continue to use our DITA Author Workspace configuration. If you want to see how to set it up, watch our first tutorial video. FrameMaker lists recent items, including files you have recently worked with. While we could click on the shortcut, we can also work with the menus to open a file. To begin, we'll open the file c underscore savingfiles.xml located in the Tutorial 4 folder. If required, at the bottom of the Open dialog, select All DITA Documents to see all file types. Now open the file by double-clicking it. As we've done in previous tutorials, remember to save the concept to the appropriate tutorial folder. If needed, choose File, Save As, and select the Tutorial underscore 05 folder. If that folder doesn't yet exist, you need to create it. Double check that the file name is C underscore Saving Files XML, then go ahead and click Save. Now let's add some Prolog content. This tutorial doesn't cover everything that Prolog supports, but will teach you enough to get you started with modifying Prolog content in general. Within Structure View, click inside the Prolog element to the right of the nested Author element. Type your full name. Our sample author is Vicki Lee. Documents may have more than one author. To add another author, just click below the Author element in Structure View. Then add another author element from the Element catalog. Type another full name for an additional author. Notice the formatting that is automatically added? With text symbols showing, it can be tricky at times to see all the content, so let's toggle them off. Showing or hiding text symbols is a quick menu click away. Hiding the text symbols makes it easy to see that the first author is prefixed by the phrase author and a colon. Each subsequent author is separated from the one before it with a comma and a space. This is automatically inserted in the default templates, but can be completely customized as well. You can change the order of authors by dragging and dropping author elements one above the other. Just look for the check mark. It lets you know that the element is placed into a valid location when you release the mouse button. Did you notice that the prefix automatically changes based on the order of the author elements? It's another way that DITA and automated formatting makes it easier for writers. Now that we've identified the authors, we'll add some metadata about the audience. In the Structure view, click below the last author element. Double-click the Metadata element in the Element Catalog. Then insert a nested audience element. The audience doesn't display any information yet. Let's explore attributes a bit more. They provide additional information that describe elements. For example, an image might have a specific height or width, and those could be attributes. Notes could have a type such as warning, tip, or remember. The attributes basically provide more information about a specific element. This could be used to format content, to display information on screen, or by other processes for things like navigation and linking. To see the attributes for an element, click the plus sign to the right of the element bubble. Based on your screen resolution and the way your workspace is configured, it might be difficult to see all the attribute information. Remember that this is completely customizable. Feel free to resize your screen. Once it's resized, it's easy to see the attributes. As none of them have any values yet, there isn't much happening. Let's fix that. When you double-click on an attribute, the Attributes pod opens. Let's double-click the Type attribute. Again, based on your workspace and resolution, you can reorganize the pod. Just drag and drop the dialog by the title. 
Leaving the pod mid-screen may work for you, but you can also drag and drop it by the title and dock it. Watch for the blue highlight to dock the pod. All of the terms in the first column in the dialog are attributes. The second represents their respective values. Since we double-click an attribute, the insertion point will automatically be in the proper value field. Type in the word user here, then press enter. In the document, you can see the word user is added beside intended audience. This is a part of the template and would appear in print. Publishing templates could be configured to drop this information or reformat it if desired. In addition, you can see the structure view displays the attribute value as well. By clicking the minus or the plus sign next to elements, you can display attribute information. Next, let's find the job attribute and change the value. Some elements have a lot of attributes. In other cases, the dialog simply isn't sized ideally for your screen. If needed, you can scroll through the attributes. Let's click in the job attribute and update the value. Type using into the value field and then press enter. Again, if needed, scroll inside the structure view to show the attributes you have worked with. Now we have set two attributes from having no values to having specific values. Based on the template, some attributes are also displayed in the document and others are not. Again, this is completely customizable. Next, let's double-click Experience Level and set a value. In this field, type Novice. Back in Structure View, click the minus sign to the right of the audience element to hide all of the attributes. Even if hidden in the Structure View, the values of an attribute can be seen if the template requires it. For example, here we've hidden the attributes, but you can see that the intended audience still reads User. If you click the plus sign next to an element with required or specified attributes, you can see them. Here we see only the attributes that are required or that you have defined. It's a good way to know what has been set, but not see so much that it's overwhelming. Click once more to see all the attributes. This displays all of them, even the ones that have no defined value. This is a quick way to see what attributes you've added to the elements in your document. Let's collapse the attributes by clicking the minus sign. Next, we're going to add keywords to the metadata element. Click below the audience element. Using the element catalog, double-click the keywords element. A nested keyword element is automatically inserted. Type the first keyword, saving. The document prologue display will update with each new keyword. You can also see the keywords displayed in the document itself. Again, based on your template and configuration, this text may show up differently, but the core structure now has a keyword. Additional keywords can be added as needed. These may end up being used for an index or to create lists of important words that are used during a search online or to categorize specific types of information. Click below the keyword element. The catalog updates to show that another keyword can be added. Double-click Keyword to add another one to the file. Then type the next keyword, Storing. Continue this process for the next two keywords, Server and Hard Drive. FrameMaker will format the finished list for you, prefixing the first entry with the word Keywords and separate the rest with commas. Collapse the Keywords element. Next, we're going to click between the author element and the metadata element to add information about the document's permissions. Insert a permissions element. Note that this element has a required attribute named View. A dialog should appear to guide you. By default, FrameMaker should prompt you for a required value. If not, then you need to add the value manually using the Attributes dialog box. If your configuration is set to prompt for required attributes, a dialog appears. You can further configure what happens when new elements are inserted by selecting the Element menu and then choosing New Element Options. Let's set some of the attributes for the new element. Before we move on, notice that at the top of the dialog there is a radio button option that can be used to show all or only required attributes. 
This option could be used if you prefer to only see a limited set of attributes if they are required when inserting an element. For now, let's keep showing All and scroll down to the attribute named View. Click in the Value field, type All, and press Enter. When done, click Insert. Notice that in the Document window, the Prolog display is updated with the phrase Freely Distributable. Let's edit an attribute that's already been set. Place the insertion point inside the Permissions element. Click the plus sign and expand the attributes, showing only the ones that have been defined. Let's also update the Attributes dialog to show only the required and specified attributes. This narrows down the list dramatically. Let's change who is allowed to view the document. Replace All with Entitled and press Enter. The attribute value changes. So does the Permissions statement in the document view. The content is now marked as being for a specific audience with a note to not share the documents, even internally. We've done a lot in this video, so it may help to choose View and then Element Boundaries as tags. This will show you all the content with the structural tags. The tags provide more insight as to where the prologue and metadata elements and their child elements are in the document. When done, you can toggle the tags off again. Remember to save and close the file when you're done with the document. Prolog and metadata can provide a great deal of new and helpful information to a document. Click the annotation to move on to Tutorial 6, where you'll learn about publishing your DITA content. All of these tutorials are also featured in our book, Adobe FreeMaker 2017, A Hands-On Guide to Creating DITA Content. For more information or to order your own copy, visit the Publishing Smarter website.